1950 Dhaka riots killed nearly 10,000 people. Mondol reveals that during his nine days stay at Dhaka, he received news of the killing of hundreds of innocent Hindus in trains on railway lines between the Dhaka and Narayan Ganj and Dhaka and Chittagong. Now he writes in his letter, quoting from his letter, On the 20th February 1950, I reached Bodishal town and was astounded to know of the happenings in Bodishal. In the district of, uh, in the district of Hindus killed, I visited almost all riot affected areas in the district. I was simply puzzled to find the havoc wrought by the Muslim, lead, uh, Muslim rioters even at places like Kashipur, uh, Madhav, Madhav Pasha and Lakutia which were within a radius of 6 miles from the district town and were connected with motorable roads. At the, at the Madhav Pasha Zamindar's house, about 200 people were killed and 40 injured. At Muladi Bandar alone, alone, the number killed would total more than 300 and was reported to me by the local Muslims including some officers. I visited Muladi village also where I found skeletons of dead bodies at some places. I found dogs and vultures eating corpses on the riverside. I got the information there that after the whole scale killing of all adult males, all the young girls were distributed among the ringleaders of the miscreants. I all whenever I read these things I wonder where they are now and obviously they are not Hindu. They are Muslims now and their sons and daughters and their grandsons and granddaughters are probably hard hard at work hating Hinduism, but they don't remember that their parents went through these things. At especially in places like Bangladesh and Punjab. At a place uh, told uh, at a place called Kalibartho Kali Khali under police station Rajapur, 63 persons were killed. Hindu houses within a stone's throw distance from the uh, said Thana office were looted, burnt and inmates killed. All Hindu shops of Babu Ganj Bazar were looted and then burnt and a large number of Hindus were killed. From detailed information received, the conservative estimate of casualties was placed at 2500 killed in the district of Bodishal alone. Total casualties of Dhaka and East Bengal Dhaka and East Bengal riot were estimated to be in the neighborhood of 10,000 killed, says Mondol in his letter narrating how he really overwhelmed how he was really overwhelmed with grief. The lamentation of women and children who had lost their all, including near and dear ones, melted my hearts. I only asked myself, what was coming to Pakistan in the name of Islam? Mondol questions the very basic idea of creation of Pakistan in his letter. Now the exodus of Hindus from Bengal. The large-scale exodus of Hindus from Bengal, according to Mandol, commenced only in the latter part of March. It appeared that within a short time, all the Hindus would migrate to India. He writes, With a view to reviving the already lost morale of the panicky Hindus, I undertook an extensive tour of East Bengal. I visited a number of places in the districts of Dhaka, Borishal, Faridpur, Khulna and Joshur. I addressed dozens of largely attending, largely attended meetings and asked the Hindus to take courage and not to leave their ancestral homes. I had this expectation that the East Bengal government and Muslim League leaders who would, would implement the terms of the Delhi agreement even though their name is called Muslim League. However, with the lapse of time, Mandol states that he began to realize that neither the East Bengal government nor the Muslim League leaders were really earnest in the matter of implementation of the Delhi government. The East Bengal government was not only much to set up machinery as envisaged in the Delhi government, but also was not willing uh, to take effective steps for the purpose. He writes, A number of Hindus who returned to the native village immediately after the Delhi agreement were not given possessions of their homes and lands, which were occupied in the meantime by the Muslims. The Liaquat Nehru Pact of the Delhi government of the Delhi agreement was a bilateral treaty between the two South Asian states of India and Pakistan where refugees were allowed to return to dispose of their property, abducted women and looted property were to be returned, forced conversions were unrecognized and minority rights were confirmed. The treaty was signed on April 8, uh, 1950, which was betrayed by Pakistan, which is why we need CAA now. Speaking on the appointment of D.N. Barbary as Minister of Minority Affairs, Mondol had expressed the view that such appointments not only did not help restore an, any confidence but on the contrary, destroyed all expectations of illusion, expectations or illusion. He is still under the illusion that they want to <laughs> do something about minorities. He, Barari, uh, Joganamanath Mandal writes, 
Barari was returned to the Bengal Legislative Assembly on the Congress ticket with the money and organization of the Congress. He opposed the scheduled caste federation candidates. Some time after his election, he betrayed the Congress and joined the federation. When he was appointed a minister, he had ceased to be a member of the federation too. I know that East Bengal Hindus agree that agree with me that by antecedents, character and intellectual attainments, Barari is not qualified to hold the position of a minister as envisaged in the Delhi agreement. Mandal says the action by Nurul Amin, the then chief minister of Bengal of East Bengal, in selecting Barari as a minister in terms of the Delhi agreement is conclusive proof that East Bengal government was neither serious nor sincere to implement uh, the Delhi, uh, Delhi agreement, whose main uh, purpose is to create such conditions as would enable the Hindus to continue to live in East Bengal with a sense of security to their life, property, honor, and religion. Mandal records, uh, I would uh, now he, quote unquote, he, he, decide, he concludes that Pakistan wants to squeeze out Hindus. Mandal records that I would like to reiterate in this connection my firm conviction that the East Bengal government is still following the well planned policy of squeezing Hindus out of the province. I must say that this policy of driving out Hindus from Pakistan has succeeded completely in West Pakistan and is nearing completion in East Pakistan too. And if you must know, it happens to this day. I know some people uh, whose sons and daughters are studying in uh, Kolkata and whose parents still live in Bangladesh and uh, they can't even sell their homes because they are not getting a good price. They are not getting any price because their neighbors are sneakily giving them hints that why should we buy your place? You leave anyway in a few years, in a few decades. Someday you will, you will leave and then we will take it for fucking free. <laughs> the appointment, now uh, Joganunath Mandal writes, the appointment of D.N. Barari as a minister and the East Bengal government's uh, unceremonious objection to my recommendation in this regard strictly conform, conform to name of what they call an Islamic is state. Pakistan has not given the Hindus entire satisfaction and a full sense of security. He still expects these things from Pakistan. No one was expecting these things from Pakistan other than some stupid leftists like Ganga Dharadikari and Jagannath Mandal. They had this illusion. What can we do? They now went. Uh, they now want to get rid of the Hindu intelligentsia so that the political, economic, and social life of Pakistan may not, in any way, be influenced by them. The Dalit leader laments about the sorry state of affairs of Hindus in Pakistan. Now, on dismal future for Hindus, he writes, the agreement is treated as a mere scrap of paper alike by the East Bengal government and the Muslim League, that a pretty large number of Hindu migrants, mostly scheduled caste cultivators, are returning to East Bengals is no indication that confidence has been restored. Attacking the government over its failure to douse the communal fire, Mandol says, on the contrary, Communal propaganda and anti-India propaganda by Pakistan, both at home and abroad, are continuing in full swing. The acts such as observance of Kashmir Day by the Muslim League all over Pakistan is an eloquent proof of communal anti-India propaganda by Pakistan. Now he realizes this. This is something that leftist student politicians don't even realize now. The, the very fact that uh, celebrating a Kashmir Day by Pakistan is, is inherently an anti-India stand. Jagannath Mandal finally understands that situation. Now, State of Hindus in East Bengal. He writes, The boycott by the Muslims of Hindu lawyers, medical practitioners, shopkeepers, traders and merchants has compelled Hindus to migrate to West Bengal in search of their means of livelihood. Wholesale requisition of Hindu houses even without following due process of, due process of law in many and non-payment in many situations and non-payment of any rent whatsoever to the owners have compelled them to seek for Indian shelter. Payments rent to Hindu landlords has stopped long before. This is exactly what I was talking about. Then that what was true in 1950 is true in 2022 that you will live anyway. Why should we pay rent? Why should we pay for, for your house? Why should we pay for your land? We will wait until you go. He also writes, Besides, the Ansars, against whom I received the complaints <coughs> all over, are a standing menace to the safety and security of Hindus. <coughs> Interference in matters of education and methods adopted by the Educational Authority for Islamization frightened the teaching staff of secondary schools and colleges out of their old familiar moorings. They have left East Bengal. As a result, most of the educational institutions ago, ago the uh, institutions 
ago the educational authority issued circular to secondary schools that joining and joining compulsory participation of teachers and students of all communities in recita- recitation from the holy quran before the school work commenced the frustration i'm re- feeling while reading this now is the same frustration i felt while reading the letter in sanjay dikshit's book it it just feels like how stupid could you have been another circular <coughs> Another circular requires headmasters of schools to name the different blocks of the premises after 12 distinguished Muslims in Bangladesh such as Jinnah, Iqbal, Ilya Qatali, Nazimuddin etc. Only very recently in an educational conference held at Dhaka the president disclosed that out of 1500 English schools in East Bengal only 500 were working owing to the migration of medical practitioners there is hardly any means of proper treatment of patients. In his letter Mandol mentions how all the priests who used to worship the household deities at Hindu houses have left Bengal the places of worship have been abandoned which has resulted in Hindus of East Bengal denying opportunity to pursue re- religious pursuits and perform social ceremonies like marriage artisans who made images of goddesses have also left he adds Muslims now uh, quoting from his di- uh, quoting directly from his letter again Muslims have replaced Hindu presidents of union boards by coercive measures with the active help and connivance of the police and circle officers. Muslims have replaced Hindu headmasters and secretaries of schools. The life of the few Hindu government servants has been made extremely miserable as many of them have either been superseded by junior Muslims or dismissed without any sufficient or any cause. Further, Mondol points out how Hindus Uh, are outlawed in Pakistan the commission of thefts and dacoities even uh, with murder is going on as before the thana office seldom records complaints made by hindus the few uh, depressed uh, depressed class girls who live in rural areas with their parents are not even spared by muslim gundas writes mondol he adds how there has been an increasing increase in the number of incidents of rape of scheduled caste girls by muslims highlighting the discrimination meted uh, meted out to hindus by muslims mondol points out that full payment is not made by muslim buyers for the price of jute and other agricultural commodities sold by hindus in market places now on the topic of forced conversions in west pakistan he writes the condition of the small number of hindus that are still living in sindh and karachi the capital of pakistan is simply deplorable i have got a list of 363 hindu temples and gurudwaras of karachi and sindh which is by no means an exhaustive list which are still in possession of muslims some of the temples have been converted into cobblers shops because cobblers use leather slaughter houses and hotels all of which are associated with meat because they have to deliberately uh, insult the hindu gods and goddesses and uh, piss off hindus none of the hindus has got back uh, these temples Mandol writes about the conversions and forceful abductions of Hindus and destruction of Hindu temples in Sindh. On the issue of land rights, Mandol says that the possession of their landed properties was taken away from Hindus without any notice and disturbed amongst uh, refugees and local Muslims. Even the possession of the Karachi Pinjra pole has not been restored to the trustees although it has uh, it was declared non-evacuee property some time ago in Karachi. I had received petitions from many an unfortunate fathers and husbands of abducted abducted Hindu girls mostly scheduled castes. Mandol says he drew the attention of the provisional government in Sindh but there was little or no effect to my extreme regret I received I received information that a large number of scheduled castes who are still living in Sindh have been forcibly converted to Islam. <coughs> he says Pakistan is accursed for Hindus. He writes Islam is being offered as the sovereign remedy for all earthly evils. In the matchless dialectics of capitalism and socialism, you present the exhilarating democratic synthesis of Islamic equality and fraternity. In that grand setting of shariat, Muslims alone are rulers while Hindus and other minorities are zimmis who are entitled to protection at a price, and you know more than anybody else prime minister what that price is. He also writes the bulk of the upper class Hindus and politically conscious scheduled castes have left East Bengal and now they have become leftists and anti-Hindus in this <laughs> is in current East Bengal in current West Bengal those Hindus who will continue to stay accursed promise 
to stay across the promise and for that matter in pakistan will i am afraid by gradual stages and in a planned manner be either converted to islam or completely exterminated he got this prediction right finally he gets something right in his support for the persecuted hindus mandol warns the pakistani establishment saying I may tell you and your fellow workers that Hindus will allow themselves whatever the threat or temptation to be treated as zimmies in the land of their birth. Today they may as indeed many of them have already done abandon their homes in sorrow but in panic. Tomorrow they strive for their rightful place in the economy of life. Uh, when leftists talk about economics and economy it it oh, it makes me laugh already. Who knows what is the womb of the future? when i am convinced that my continuance in office in the pakistan central government is not of any help to hindus i should not with a clear conscience create the false impression in the minds of the hindus of pakistan and peoples abroad that hindus can live there with honor and with a sense of security in respect of their life property and religion this is about hindus on civil liberty uh, for Mus- no civil liberty for muslims he writes not just hindus uh, the muslims in pakistan who are outside the charmed circle of the league rulers and their corrupt and inefficient bureaucracy have also been <laughs> looked at inferiorly according to mandol uh, this is probably they are talking about the term called muhajir which we used to hear in uh, in bollywood movies a lot he writes the fate of khan abdul ghafar khan then whom a more devout muslim had not walked this earth for many years and of his gallant patriotic brother dr khan saheb mr surawardi to whom is due in a large measure the league's triumph in bengal is for pra- practical purposes a pakistan prisoner surawardi himself who has to move under permit and can't open his lips under orders mr fazul haq that dearly loved grand old man of bengal who was the author of that now famous lahore resolution is plowing his lonely furrow in the pres- precincts of the dhaka high court of judicature says mondol opening the opining that the so called islamic planning is as ruthless as it is complete now sharing his own bitter experience he writes leaving aside the overall picture of pakistan and the callous and cruel injustice done to others my own personal experience is no less sad bitter and revealing you used your position as the prime minister and leader of the parliamentary party to ask me to issue a statement which i did on the 8th september last last year you know what i you know that i was not willing to make a statement containing untruths and half truths which were worse than untruths it was not possible for me to reject your request so long as i was there working as a minister with you and under your leadership but i cannot go any longer and cannot afford to carry this load of false pretensions and untruth on my conscience and i have decided to offer my resignation as your minister which i am hereby placing in your hands and which i hope you will accept without delay you are of course at liberty to dispense with that office or dispose of it in such a manner as may suit adequately and effectively the objectives of your islamic state this the scathing observations made in this letter which rose out of the personal experience of jogendranath mondol actually provides the stark reality of the failure of pakistan as a nation 70 years down the line every word etched by jogendranath mondol proves to be true